Welcome to Start Writing Vocab Quick Episode. Our first word is... Viand. Viand. An item of food, especially a choice or tasty dish. Uh, provisions. Food. The family sat down to table and a, fr- and, a, and a frugal meal of cold viands was deposited before them. This is from Thomas Hardy in 1891. I feel that in the narrative itself, this word does not belong. It's excessively complicated and unfamiliar and would stumble anyone. <laughs> right? However, I think if you were, if you were, if you called something the fruit of the vine and then later referred it to a viand, I think you could get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> Your thoughts? Uh, man, it goes back to what I said before that a lot of these words, I think I just don't see a character using them. So unless your narrator is really, uh, prolific. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I probably you, wouldn't use this word. If you were but writing, I, I like it. It's fun to read. If you were writing a historical novel in the 1800s, I think it would be appropriate in the narrative because we see it coming from Hardy in the 1800s. Yeah. But I feel like the word kind of fell out of fashion. Hmm. Obliterate. It's a verb. Or obliterate. To remove from recognition or memory. To remove from existence. Or to make undecipherable by wiping out or covering over. The children's chalk drawings remained on the sidewalk until a rainstorm came along and obliterated them. I feel like that is a perfect description. (laughs) Like, that right there... Is when you read read the word and be like, yes, that is the word for that sentence, right? This complete wipe away from memory, from existence, and it's the chalk washed away by the rain. And now, now when I when I say that, because they're using obliterate, I imagine a heavy, hard hitting rainstorm, the kind that pounds on your window. So the root of this word, uh, litera, is like letter or like it's it's in writing. And ob is really? to take it out of writing. So, huh. so it's, it's to erase or to wash away. Huh. So, so it fits that cho- the chalk even yeah, more that way. Yeah, that washing away of the writing. Yeah, because you hear that in the lit, in the ob, literate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To wash away the writing. Like to unwrite. To unwrite. That's, that's cool. Okay, next word. Okay, is wifty. Eccentrically silly, giddy, or inane. Ditsy. Ditsy. Wifty. Okay. And uh, developers are, by nature's dreamers and gamblers, seeing opportunity and growth where others see only a steak and bagel train. Many developers appear a tad wifty, perhaps exiting in some al- existing in some alternated state of consciousness. But this project is in a class by itself. So... In that paragraph, I feel wifty is incorrect, but I like the word wifty for <laughs> the definition, right? This silly giddy, that T-E sounds silly to me, yeah. right? It makes me think of like whimsical. Yeah, yeah. Or so whim, I, I, I feel like you could put this word in the narrative. And if you put it in the right spot, like particularly if you used it in combination with giddy to describe <laughs> somebody, I feel like it would just fit. I would look at it and be like, yes. That is the right word for that. And it rhymes with nifty. (laughs) There you go. All right. Next up, we have bombinate. And it means to make a sustained, deep, murmuring, humming, or buzzing sound. That's bombinate. Buzz or drone. The only sounds Jared could hear in the office that night were those of his typing and the air conditioner bombinating. I feel like that is perfect because you've got that just, it's a heavy drum, just <laughs> bombinating. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. You, you cannot, you can almost feel the sound in the, the actual word. word. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's that called? Is it onomatopoeia? onomatopoeia? Yeah. Onomatopoeia. I feel like that word's got some good onomatopoeia to it, yeah. but it's not just a buzz. I imagine like a strong E minor buzz, not like a high, <laughs> high ringing buzz, right? Yeah. It's not like the buzz of the boar bell. It's that droning. Of the air conditioner. I yeah, like, okay, like I was thinking like a fridge. Yeah, Yeah. the fridge. Okay, next up is fervid. It's an adjective, and it means very hot or burning. Or marked by often extreme intensity of feeling. 
go to the example here at the Toronto International Film Festival. There are posters for an upcoming Guillermo del Toro curated exhibit called Influencers that will let you sample the movies and books and music that fed the director's fervid imagination. Okay, so the root of this is the same as fever. So you can see like this burning that would kind of lead to, I guess, craziness. Like, yeah, uh, I feel like there's like when I've when I've encountered the word before, it tended to be connected to this feeling and this kind of ma manic association yeah. there. And that that's that's my own feeling on the word. And just as I've seen it, as I've read, is not that intensity of feeling, kind of a manic, wild state. Yeah. So, which I feel like you get, right? You've got, cause it fervid, it feels like fever, but it also feels a little bit like feral. And so there's a little bit of that okay. just wild, intense emotion is, is how I, I feel about the word. But I, I would feel comfortable in a general narrative, not a POV specific with the word. Yeah. Okay. Again, that word is fervid. A laud, to praise, usually to excess. So several cheers went up. Picard, unaware of the scene unfolding behind him, seemed to think they were meant to belaud his plan. The meaning was so short I forgot. To praise, usually to excess. Okay. So my own thoughts on the word here is the belaud. I'm unfamiliar with it, but I feel like this... Well, so, no, you know it. It comes from laud. Right, yeah. And so it, the, I'm trying to think. There are a few other words. So what I'm what, well, what I'm thinking is you have the word gaudy, and it sounds like gaudy to me, and that's just <laughs> over the top ridiculous, right? So you're not just lauding it; you're be lauding. You're going above and beyond to the point that in my mind you're almost making a mockery, right? Of it is is kind of how I see the word. So well, and it comes from Laos. I don't know if you read uh, what's it called. The Lost Symbol by Dan Brown. I did. And there's a key phrase in there, a Latin phrase, Laos Deo, mm. which means praise God. And so this Laos, or laud, to be laud, it's to praise. It's like that, huh. that same kind of worshipful, uh, that hailing. Huh. So my own thoughts are that the laud and laud are so close that a reader probably wouldn't pick up, pick up the nuances between them. And Bilad is far rarer, so I would simply use Laud. And if you want to communicate that excess, I would do it in a different method rather than using this word. I think it's a throwaway, but now you know it. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and loop these in. That is the end of the show.